any advice to kind of um, feminist women coming into academia, coming into psychology, um, things that, and you know, I think that implicit in a lot of what you said, there's a lot of advice, but yeah. anything that you just want to kind of put out there? Um, yes, <laughs> two things. First of all, I think one of the things that's really helped me in the last couple of years as a new faculty member is that right away I started looking for the like-minded people. Okay, so when I got here, uh, the first thing I did was I had a million meetings with as many people as I could. You know, lots of men, women, whatever, anybody who seemed vaguely interesting <laughs> or related to my work, I invited them for a coffee and we had a coffee and we talked. And and through this process, I was able to put together a group of women, mostly um, at my university, but also around the country, who are around the same stage of career that I am, and who are feminists as well. Okay. okay, so what that means is that when I have an idea that I'm working on, like this militarism paper, you know, and I'm an outsider here, you know, yeah. Canadian, right? Yeah. So there's a lot of blind spots. I mean, I sort of it's a benefit in the sense of uh, being able to have a critical view because it's not in the air that I breathe. I mean, it's just, I, I'm new to it, but there are also blind spots. And so I can bring these ideas to them and say, and whatever the topic is and say, so, so mm -hmm. tell me, you know, what do you think about this and how, should, how can I develop this to people to think with, mm -hmm. but even more, it's people to come back to it, <laughs> you know? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's people to say, you know, the dean just said x y and z can you believe that you know or what do you think about this the students approach me to do this or you know any kind of problems that i have that are related to gender not related to gender but are all related to career yeah it's a group of women who are smart who are feminists who are critical who you you, you know someone to talk to about the issues that you're facing so i think finding a community of really supportive like-minded women is mandatory mm -hmm. really important and really hard to do i mean as i said like i, I had to meet a lot of people before mm -hmm. i was able to form a very small group of people that i felt that i could trust and that i could mm -hmm. talk to but they're very very important to my success mm -hmm. i think yeah um and then the other thing is sort of um just listening to your heart i, I know that sounds a little corny to mm -hmm. say but um i as I think I, I said earlier, I sort of did that because I didn't know that you weren't supposed to do that. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, it really served me well because it means that anything that I do, I do because I really want to do it mm -hmm. and because I'm really interested in it. Not because I think that this is the thing that's going to get published or I mm -hmm. think this is the grant that's going to bring me money or I think this is the career path that's going to get me the job. Mm -hmm. So I think it's really important to follow your passions and to stay really true to, um, you know, the things that kind of light you up, the things that kind of engage mm -hmm. you and interest you. Because, I mean, the other way to do it, and I've seen a lot of my colleagues do this, is to go with what they think is trendy, mm -hmm. you know, uh, whether that's a topic or a career trajectory, you know, picking like rather than picking feminist psychology, let's say picking social psychology, because there's more jobs in social psychology. But then you spend, you know, your whole life doing things that you're kind of blah about. <laughs> you know, and so what's the point of that? Yeah, yeah. So I think it's really important to stay true to your passion. Yeah. Um, 